In case you haven't had the opportunity to check out our last few videos, a quick recap will bring you up to speed. On the return trip from Key West, there was a stop in Miami to fix our port engine. Franny and our captain were able to get the boat back up to Pompano, which is where the boat was stored. Franny worked through the generator issues, and she and I worked on cleaning the starboard fuel tank as well. We are finally able to move the boat from Pompano Beach into Fort Lauderdale to the marina called Pier 66. And in the process of doing that, we had yet another problem problem with our port engine. And that is where we pick up our story is from Pier 66 with that problematic port engine. So that allows us to bring the boat in. We can just do a little bit more R&D basically, look at everything, and then come up with a plan. I uh, pretty much got everything, all the information I need here now. This is Colt. Colt is our project manager who has been assigned to our project within Just Catamarans. He came out to visit us at Pier 66 to evaluate all the different items that we wanted to have done. We not only needed to repair work, but we also wanted to do some upgrades to the boat. He gave us some estimates on time timing and we're going to go from there. We are moving the boat today down to Harbor Town Marina to get some work done at Jess Cats. I'm sure you've heard of Jess Cats. They're quite famous in these parts. So here's a funny thing though. We do have a little bit of a problem with our port engine. Throttle linkage is weird and it's not shifting well. Right. We have to actually get towed out. Yeah, it's just for the maneuverability standpoint. We definitely don't want to hit any other boats, so we're getting towed out. But the funny thing is this canal is super, super narrow. So they're literally going to tow us out backwards out of this bit of the canal and I'm thinking they're gonna have to turn us around at some point, right? I hope they do. Yeah, you can't really drag a catamaran backwards. It's, I don't think it would go straight, to be honest. So we've got our rudder locked down. Yeah. You're probably wondering what Just Catamarans is all about. It was a business formed 20 years ago by Kent and Belinda Grimbeek. It also has a well-known and established service center for several production catamaran companies, including Fountain Peugeot. Just Catamarans, often referred to as Just Cats, is located in the Harbortown Marina in Dania Beach, Florida, just south of Fort Lauderdale. We chose Just Catamarans because of their reputation and their long history of FP service. All right, well, we're hauling out. This is going to be kind of crazy, so uh, see how it goes. You can see that Colt is struggling with that port shifter. This was our fear that while we were in these close quarters, we would have a repeat of the shifter not coming out of reverse. However, Colt and all the crew did a great job and got the boat into the sling and hauled out. You might recall from our Key West trip that we sprung a leak in the port rudder tube which Franny had to find certain things to be able to fix it. If you haven't seen that video I highly recommend that you watch it so that you know what's going on here. After talking with Just Catamarans, we made a decision that it would probably be a wise decision to not only replace the port rudder tube, but to do the starboard one as well, because we weren't really sure what was going on and it could have been a bad batch for both. It's day two of being on the hard. It was a little hard to film yesterday. There was a lot of carnage going on in both of these engine bays to get these rudder tubes out, but they are both out and the plug at the bottom, I think they call it a bearing is out as well. So let me show you kind of 
what's left over. So there's the hole. So that's where the rudder tube goes. There's quite a bit of built up fiberglass and stuff around it. So it was pretty difficult to pound that thing out, I guess. Maybe they just weren't getting on the lip of it, but it's out now, so that's a good thing. And here's the pieces of what's left of this thing. So that they had to cut it out. See, so they kind of ground it and cut it out with a sawzall, actually, and popped it out. And that's what it looked like. The threaded bit here was up. That was up. That's what the rudder post actually screwed onto. Here's the hole from the other side. They've been working on it, trying to clean it up a bit, get the old lubricant out of there. They had to patch up a bit because the saws all went a little crazy. I think that's what's going on there. This is Andrew. He's been on the team that has been working on removing the old bad rudder tubes from our boat. The part that he's holding is called a rudder bearing and housing, and he's answering how this works. Pops in. Yeah. And then it rotates. And then it rotates. Yeah. Oh, and so it spins. Nice. So, and the biggest thing is just to take it out, you just get it in this way. Uh-huh. And you want it to spin freely, but if you get any kind of burr on the edge of it, it's going to catch up on the pipe. Okay. That's the biggest thing. So, uh, grease it up when we put it in, and we just make sure that anything, and it should be very, you know, free moving. And then once you get it lined up like a little bit, it pops out. So we just put a rubber, we put a rubber piece through it just to use it to screw it onto the pipe. Gotcha. Okay. Usually with the pipe, we put the pin in, the, that stops the pipe from moving, and we use okay. this to do it while we're going to do the pipe with just a wrench. The whole point of that is this, so that I guess the rudder post can move a little bit? Right, it lets it pivot, but this is very tight on the on the pole, so the pole doesn't have any, like if you have anything... No lateral movement. Right, you don't have free play, like this would have the free play yep. where that's in, but if you get any bearings, that catches up on the uh, aluminum. The next part of the process is a team effort between Andrew and the other technician. Andrew is currently under the boat working with the Sequaflex on the rudder bearing and housing. The technician is working from above to attach the rudder tube very carefully into the housing. As you can see, he has a cloth wrapped around it. They want to be very, very careful that they don't get any kind of debris or anything else into that area. Underneath here, we had this hatch sealed in completely because it was just, as you can tell, look at these, these handles are all rusted and they look like hell. So I had this thing completely sealed in so there would be no more water egress. The handles were holding it, are holding the plate in while the, while the sealant dries. I think it's dry now. It's the starboard sail drive. Now this guy always had a bad rumble in it and I think we found the reason. This is all black, it's hard to see, but this is, was wrapped all the way around that prop. Look at all that, quite a bit of it actually. So, that means the seal in here could be compromised. I did check the oil level in both sail drives and it was fine, and the oil is clear. So two things will happen if your seal is bad. You know, the level will actually increase in there. When you go to take the dipstick out, it'll be all the way at the top or even higher and it'll be very milky and that'll tell you that you've got seawater egress into the sail drive and that's very bad so nothing like that happened the oil levels right where it should be and the oil looked good and clear so that's good but it's since it's close enough to the yearly service i think we're going to have both of these serviced have the seals replaced on both of them the, the zincs look really good here so i don't think any of that needs to be replaced probably just the seals will flush flush the fluid now we do have a big problem with the with the port not shifting well. And so we're gonna have a guy come out and take a look at that today as well. And that's gonna be a kind of an interesting thing, but I think we're gonna have to get the top end, the clutches. There's two sets of clutches on that thing, a forward clutch and a reverse clutch, and they're multiple plates, like five plates or something. And if they get destroyed from somebody shifting too fast one way or the other, then that can do it. And it's possible, you know, we had a throttle linkage issue and maybe somebody just couldn't get it out of gear or whatever and they just jammed it and messed it up. So, uh, <laughs> so that's going to be this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to that. This is Chad. Chad is just Catamaran's engine expert. He knows a lot about Yanmar's, Volvo's, and any other sea-related engines. We are hoping that Chad can dig in and figure out what's going on with that port engine of ours. I'm going to put both of these in forward. Boink, boink. That'll lock them in gear. 
does it feel? That one's slipping. Is it slipping? Yeah. So okay. if you look here, I shouldn't be able to turn it against. Sure. This one I can turn against. No. So this one, I can no. turn it against. Okay, no. So the clutch is slipping. So that one definitely, 100% yeah. can rebuild. That one, let's check reverse on both of them because we've got two different clutch. Sure. Yeah. Sides, yeah. Let's see that the reverse on that side. I mean, this side we're going to replace both anyway. Have to. It's one kit. But let's check that one and make sure it's good. Sounds good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these guys into reverse. Neutral, reverse. Neutral, reverse. They're both in reverse. This one's reverse is good, but it's forward is slipping. That one's reverse is also good, so it's only this side. Okay. Now also that thing you're having where it's struggling to go between forward, reverse and neutral. Yes. You've got three springs that are holding your carriers together. Yep, seen that. And I think you're missing, one of them is busted or something, we'll see when we get it out. Something's wrong there. It should easily go in in neutral. Okay, so you feel that the, the starboard is okay then? The starboard is good. Okay, and it seems to shift pretty well anyway. Yeah, so your port is a problem. Okay. So we, we'll need to do that rebuild. So we're going to get this sail drive service today. So well. we're going to still do the lower seals and everything today. Okay. So we'll do the seals, the O-rings and the anodes. And then, yeah, when we do the clutch, all we do is we take out a quart of oil and we put it back in afterwards. Oh, you put it, okay, okay. And these are the 150s, hey? Yes, they are. That's correct. 150S-C. That's no problem. I'll get all the stuff now. Okay. And then we'll get on to that. We'll be finished this afternoon. Okay. On both sides. On both sides for the, for the sale drive service. Yeah. Okay. As you can probably imagine, Chad's services are in very high demand within Just Catamarans. We needed to be able to get onto Chad's schedule so that he could help rebuild the port side clutches so that they would work within our engine. Now we only had a certain period of time scheduled at Just Catamarans to actually be on the hard. So it's entirely possible that Chad would actually have to come back and finish up the job at our boat at Pier 66. And just as Franny and Chad discussed, the sail drive service for both of our sail drives was next. Hey, you can still keep these as spares. Yeah, they look pretty good. No, they look pretty good. Hold yeah. on. The sail drive service includes new seals, zincs, and a full fluid change as well as a thorough inspection. Ready? There it goes. Okay. It's clean. It's good. Let's see if we can find further evidence of that bad sail drive clutch. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm taking it off. Look at that. Sure, yeah, well, that's a lot. Um, and there's also some other pieces which leads me to believe. Remember, I said to you, I think one of your springs yes. has come off. Yeah. That's what I'm also starting to see there, but we'll see that when we pull the top off. Sure. That and the other thing we don't do is clean up this little piece of the shaft that's off the, the seals. And what happens is when you put the hub back over it, yeah. it, it grabs the lip of one of them. Oh, and sure, sure, and just, and just slices it, yeah. So we just use uh, the, the blunt end of a snap blade and just clean yeah. grab that. And we basically just run it clean. Okay. And it comes off relatively easy. We do the whole thing, check for the grooves. Once yes. these grooves start getting bad, we use a little plastic white spacer and we just put it in there just to move the, the lip of the seal to the next point. Okay. So it can sit in a different part of the shaft to gotcha. extend the laugh out of it. Yeah, so the seals go in a ponzi. Yes. One will keep the oil in, the other one will water out. Keep the water out. The biggest thing, the problem we see here is boats coming up here from the Caribbean or elsewhere and they put the seals in the same way. Oh, really? So you're either having all the oil pour out or all the water coming in. Reassembly is pretty straightforward. If you do this next time, mm -hmm. the Volvo cell drives get an airlock in the bottom when you fill them up. You do it now, the next morning check it again and it'll have come up slowly. As Just Catamarans works their way through changing the oil of both of the sail drives, it was somewhat what we confirmed. The starboard engine was fine, the oil looked clear and good but on the port side, there was some shiny flex that indicates that there's definitely an issue with that port engine. 
With the sail drive service complete, the new underwater lights installed, and the bottom bearings installed into the new rudder tubes, it was all hands on deck to raise the boat up a bit and get the rudders reinstalled into the new rudder tubes. Then, with the rudders and steering linkages complete, it was finally time to go back in the water. But due to a scheduling issue, the port sail drive clutch was not able to be repaired until after we would return to Pier 66. Unfortunately, that meant we would have to be towed back home. Womp womp. Thanks so much to the Lyles family for all their help getting the boat safely back home and helping with filming. Join us next time when we get the port sail drive completely repaired and Just Cats fixes a major fatal design flaw with the Fountain Peugeot steering system. You will not want to miss this episode. Until next time, safe travels.